Let me ask you a question. What do you feel when you think about slavery? That's a deep question. Welcome to Sunday School Made Simple. Each week, we use UMI's Precepts Digital to make Sunday School, well, simple with an easy to understand format. The text for you students of the word and teaching tips for those of you who teach. You can find more in-depth study, resources, and join our community at preceptsdigital.com. Well, are you ready to begin? Let's pray. Father, uh, we live in a world where slavery is still an issue. It has wounded many and, and left a generational problem among those who are even now free. We have slavery of the mind, of the spirit, not just the body. And I pray, Lord God, as we dive into your word, that we'll get clarity on this issue. We know that we are all free in you, but some of us are obligated to serve. Help us to be able to put that in balance and perspective as we proceed through life. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes, let's forget about slavery. Let's just talk about the issue of authority, being under authority. I don't know about you, but I've had my moments in life where I had issues with authority, not wanting to be under authority. And yet, as Bob Dylan's song says, we all got to serve somebody. How do we serve? How do we serve in a joyful heart? How do we serve in a way that glorifies God and is a blessing to those that we serve? That's the real issue. We've got to be able to find the balance because at the end of the day, we all do serve someone. But how we serve will determine the outcome of our life and our joy level. I hope that helps somebody who's struggling with authority today. Paul writes a letter to Philemon to tell him about a new relationship he should have with his runaway slave Onesimus in light of Jesus Christ. This is what we're going to discuss today as we continue our journey through the entire Bible in one year. We'll look into the mirror of God's Word by discussing what's important to know, feel, and do from our lesson today. Let's read our first set of verses from Philemon chapter 1, verses 8 through 12. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Philemon chapter 1, verse 8 says, That is why I'm boldly asking a favor of you. I could demand it in the name of Christ because it's the right thing for you to do. But because of our love, I prefer simply to ask you. Consider this as a request from me. Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus, I appealed to you to show kindness to my child Onesimus. I became his father in the faith while here in prison. Onesimus hasn't been of much use to you in the past, but now he is very useful to both of us. I'm sending him back to you, and with him comes my own heart. The key point is an appeal based on Christian compassion. Let's examine the background and context of these verses so we can get a better understanding of what this passage is about. Although there are other names mentioned, Philemon is actually a personal letter from Paul to Philemon appealing on behalf of Onesimus, a runaway slave. Philemon was a wealthy landowner in or near Colossae who had opened his home for Paul's ministry and the church's meeting. Paul wrote and sent a letter from prison to these Colossian Christians at the same time that he wrote the personal letter to Philemon. When Paul wrote this correspondence, he was in prison, either in Ephesus or Rome. He included Timothy in the greeting, but we can tell that this was a personal letter from Paul because he wrote in the first person using I. He mentioned that the letter was to Philemon and Sister Aphia, probably Philemon's wife, and now Archippus, who was either Philemon's son or an elder in the church. By including these others in the address, Paul added strength to his appeal to Philemon. This is just one of the many devices used by Paul to ensure that Philemon would follow his advice. The big picture is, Paul advocates for Onesimus, Paul asked Philemon for a favor rather than giving him a command concerning Onesimus. 
He reminds Philemon that he has the spiritual authority to command him, but instead he appeals to Philemon's integrity to do the right thing. Paul also appeals on the basis of their shared love for one another. Then Paul reminds Philemon he is both an elder and now a prisoner for the gospel. How could Philemon say no? Paul calls Onesimus his child because he is his spiritual father. Paul is the one who's led him to Jesus Christ as Savior. Here Paul makes a little pun of Onesimus' name, which means useful or profitable. This was a common name given to slaves. However, during the time of Onesimus' escape, he had been useless to his master. Now, since he's been converted, Onesimus has been a wonderful help to his spiritual father, Paul. Paul is sure that since Onesimus has been saved, he would serve Philemon well. But Paul tells Philemon that in sending Onesimus back to him, it is like sending his own heart. Let's read our next set of verses from our scripture lesson in Philemon chapter 1, verses 13 through 14. He says, I wanted to keep him here with me while I'm in these chains for preaching the good news, and he would have helped me on your behalf. But I didn't want to do anything without your consent. I wanted you to help because you were willing and not because you were forced. The key point is an appeal based on Christian service. Timothy was Paul's partner in ministry, but this meant that he was often gone for long periods of time to take care of evangelistic and pastoral concerns. But Onesimus was there ministering to Paul's personal needs on a daily basis. All of us owe our spiritual parents or mentors for their leading us to Christ. Philemon owed Paul and Onesimus owed Paul. We should honor those who have led us to Christ, especially as they get older. But Philemon was busy in Christian service in Colossae, so he couldn't help Paul, his spiritual father. So Paul suggests that Onesimus is serving him in Philemon's place. Paul could just have written and told Philemon that he was keeping Onesimus with him to help him in his place and that he was sure Philemon would have wanted that to happen. However, he risked making Philemon resentful, and since Paul could not just pick up a phone and talk this over with Philemon, he sent Onesimus all the way back to Colossae. Let's read our final set of verses from our scripture lesson in Philemon chapter 1, verses 15 through 18. He says, It seems you lost Onesimus for a little while so that you could have him back forever. He's no longer like a slave to you. He's more than a slave, for he's a beloved brother, especially to me. Now he will mean much more to you, both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he's wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge it to me. The key point is an appeal based on Christian brotherhood. Well, Philemon probably thought it was just unfortunate when Onesimus ran away. But Paul wants to help him see that this happened so that God could use it for good. Now, Onesimus comes back in an eternal relationship. He has become Philemon's brother in Christ. In the church, the slave master has no higher rank than the slave because they are brothers and sisters. So once Onesimus received Christ, his relationship with Philemon and every other believer was changed forever. In the final appeal, Paul asked Philemon to welcome Onesimus just as he would welcome Paul himself. And Paul volunteers to pay anything that Onesimus owes him. So how did Philemon respond? Did he brutally punish Onesimus for running away? Did he keep him as a more valuable slave now that he was a Christian? Or did he set him free to return to ministering unto Paul? Bible scholars point out that if Philemon had not gone along with Paul's advice, Philemon probably would not have allowed the letter to be preserved. Some have even speculated that Onesimus, the bishop of Ephesus in AD 110, was the same Onesimus as in the letter to Philemon. Further, 
they think he might have been a force for the inclusion of this letter in our Bible in order to show God's grace in taking a runaway slave and making him the bishop of that great city of Ephesus. Well, that's what's important to know. But how should we feel in response to today's lesson? We should feel whatever we feel about this lesson today. If the tradition of Onesimus going from a slave to being a bishop is true, we may feel inspired by this amazing story of transformation through Christ. Paul calling Philemon to Christian brotherhood with a former slave instead of simply keeping the law, which would return him to bondage, may feel inspiring as well. But we may feel traumatized or grieved as we consider that Paul didn't simply keep a slave free, that this passage is unclear on whether Paul is an advocate for or against slavery in general, and that Paul returns a man to slavery. Especially as African Americans, this may make us angry, sad, confused, or generally upset. The beautiful truth is that God is with us and can receive us to himself regardless of how we feel. The Psalms are loaded with that reminder that we can be honest about our feelings with God and that God loves us regardless of how we feel. Well, that's how we should feel, but what should we do with what we've just learned? We should use our positions to advocate. We can debate whether Paul advocates for the right or wrong thing with Philemon, but we can clearly see the importance of Paul's advocacy as an apostle. As believers, we should do what Jesus did and advocate for the vulnerable. Whether the blind man Bartimaeus, the woman with the issue of blood, the woman caught in adultery, the little children of Israel, Mary Magdalene, his mother Mary, the lepers at the gate, or the countless others named and unnamed in the gospel, Jesus was an advocate for people. We should speak up for people who can't speak up for themselves, who are vulnerable, or who face persecution. When we have positions of authority, we have a responsibility to advocate for those we lead. Even if we don't have a position, as believers, we should advocate for those who are in need. Well, that's our scripture made simple. Do you remember our key points? Appeal to Christian compassion. Appeal based on Christian service. And appeal to Christian brotherhood. Well, it's been my honor to share with you today. For additional resources that will help you as you study or teach, I invite you to subscribe to PreceptsDigital.com. You'll find my lesson plan, special teaching tips, the word made simple, and more. In addition, you'll connect with a community of believers who are growing as they study God's Word together. I'm looking forward to seeing you at PreceptsDigital.com. Now let's close the lesson with our Keep in Mind verse from Philemon chapter 1, verse 21 in the New Living Translation, which was not in our lesson but is a great summary of Paul's instructions to Philemon. He writes, I am confident as I write this letter that you will do what I ask and even more. Philemon chapter 1, verse 21, the New Living Translation. Child of God, as believers, we should strive to advocate for the freedom and flourishing of others. Have a great week.